All right, so the, the third sign that you might be neurodivergent is you have this unique ability to hyperfocus. Before we go too deep into it, I want to distinguish the hyperfocus from mania, okay? So mania is a distinguishing feature of bipolar disorder. Bipolar 1, bipolar 2, cyclothymia. This is when, for a span of at least four days, you're good with little to no sleep. You're extremely motivated. Sometimes you're talking really fast. Your decisions become a bit more questionable. You might spend a lot of money, throw-seeking behaviors. When you're manic, you can get a lot of things done. You're very, very productive, okay? You're very productive when you're manic. When you're hyper-focusing, it might, it should not impact your sleep as much. Now, you might hyper-focus deep into the night, but it doesn't mean that you're manic. The hyper-focus just means that I'm working on this right now. Don't bother me. Like, I'm working on this. I got to get this due. I got to get this turned in before it's due. I'm working on this project. I got my sticky notes here. I got my water here. I'm, I'm working on this right now. Don't break my focus, because if you break it, I might not get it back. So I'm going to remove all the distractions. I'm going to zone in on this. Whenever you're studying for a standardized test, SAT, NCLEX, MCAT, whatever the case may be, when you hyper-focus before a standardized test, normally you tend to do better. Now, if you're manic, you know, you probably would do well as well. You know, you shouldn't do too bad. But a unique ability to hyper-focus, I see this a lot. This is this is truly an ADHD thing. This is an ADHD thing. Autism, sure. But when autistic people hyper-focus, in my experience, is normally from reluctance to deviate away from a routine. Like I got this routine and I'm going to do things this way and I'm going to lock it and get it done. Now you could have ADHD and autism and you might just hyper-focus in many different unique ways, but hyper-focus is a neurodivergent thing. My daughter's autism ADHD diagnosis helped me parent and break some serious generational crap. Ooh, Mickey Ficky. This is deep. This is deep. Because what do we know about ADHD and autism? This this runs in families. So back in the day, you used to get beat over this. I mean, if you I come from the South, they'll beat you if you can't get your, your, your work done on time. They'll beat you if you're talking back, being defiant. They just call that a bad kid. There was no, th think, about, th think about it. Back in the day, there was no IEP plan. You were just a bad kid. The rage that comes when I'm interrupted uh, while activating hyper-focus mode. Lynn, I know what you're talking about. I hate this so much. Like when I'm focusing on something, it takes me forever in a day to, to focus. But when I do start to focus, it's like, don't break this focus. Don't, don't do, just leave me alone. Just leave me alone for a little bit. And then we can talk afterwards. But right now it took me three hours to focus. So I got to say locked in um, to my little brother. I'm on the, I'm on live. See, my little brother's calling me right now. If I wasn't live, I'll pick up. Cause I always pick up on family calls, but it's not really breaking my hyper focus. Cause I'm already present right here. Crystal says, I received my diagnosis at 35 and it took major ongoing advocacy for myself. Crystal says, ladies, if you are struggling, don't give up. Ladies, if you're struggling, listen to what Crystal said. Don't give up. Don't give up.